Have you ever considered moving to a new country? Well, if you work remotely or own a business, then this is a video you cannot afford to miss. I'll be taking you through some of the most remote working friendly and tax efficient countries in the world. So, don't go anywhere. Now, before I dive into the video, I must stress that I am not a financial, tax or immigration advisor. I suggest you speak to a specialist before making moves like, I don't know, moving to a new country. I'll also say that these picks are in no particular order, so do bear that in mind. With that out of the way, let's jump into the first country on our list, and that is Dubai. OK, now I may be a bit biased here, as Dubai is currently where yours truly hangs his hat. And that is for a number of reasons. But let's start on one of the most relevant for us, and that is, of course, crypto regulations. Well, Dubai has its very own digital asset regulator, and it's called VARA, or the Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority. This is the authority that regulates virtual currency across the emirate. What this basically means is that the regulator has an exclusive mandate to issue licenses related to crypto in Dubai. Now, as far as I'm aware, VARA is the first of its kind in that there aren't any other countries which have a regulatory body to oversee the industry. Moreover, VARA recently came out with its latest framework for 2032. I won't go into it here in too much detail, but the main points to take away from it are that it gives crypto firms and VASPs, that is, virtual asset service providers, clear rules of the road when it comes to operating. Having such clear rules is a breath of fresh air for a crypto community that has been jaded by arbitrary and seemingly disconnected actions by regulators in other parts of the world. I'll leave a link to the latest guidelines in the description for you, and I encourage you to take a look at them when you have the time. So, that's crypto regulations. But Dubai is also an attractive place from a tax efficiency perspective. It's well known that there is no personal income tax. And, perhaps most importantly for all those crypto investors out there, there are no capital gains taxes either. That means, so long as you are a Dubai tax resident, you won't be charged any personal taxes, apart from sales taxes, etc. When it comes to businesses, Dubai has recently changed its long-standing 0% corporate tax rate. From June of this year, those businesses that make more than 375,000 dirham, about 100,000 US dollars, will have to pay a corporation tax of 9%. Now, while this isn't as delightful as the 0% we used to enjoy, it's still not a bank breaker. Moreover, there are exemptions to this for certain qualifying incomes, the list of which I'll leave in the description for you. Now, you can't exactly blame them for asking something back in terms of tax when you consider all the other benefits of living in Dubai. For one, it's a really safe place. There is virtually no theft, and personal safety is almost guaranteed here. That's something many women and people with kids that I've spoken to here greatly appreciate. So, if you want to feel safe and secure, then Dubai is a great place to consider. In terms of other benefits, the public infrastructure is world-class. Everything from roads to bridges, airports to trains. For example, I was quite surprised at how efficient the Dubai metro was when I first got here. Remote workers will also be pleased to hear that the broadband speed is second to none. For most people, though, Dubai is often associated with glitz and glamour, the millionaire lifestyle that's so often pushed on Instagram. And that is indeed true. There is a high concentration of wealth and there is an abundance of things for you to do if you have the money to spend. There's no shortage of clubs, restaurants, car dealerships, etc. designed to part people from their money. And the cost of living in general is high. However, what's often overlooked is that most people who live here live an altogether quieter life, like, well, me, for instance. Mrs. Guy and myself have a villa with a garden in a nice, quiet neighbourhood and generally give the parties and beach clubs a wide berth. There's also a lot of local culture and history to learn about and plenty of things to do that don't cost the earth. The point is that you don't necessarily need a fat paycheck to get by here. In fact, according to cost of living rankings, the UAE actually comes in lower than the US, the UK, and many other European countries. 
That said, it's still higher than a number of other countries on this list, and certain components of that cost of living ranking have exploded over the past two years. The most notable of which is property prices, which seem to show no sign of slowing down. That's because Dubai has seen an explosion of expats moving here. Part of that is due to all the aforementioned benefits. But then there's also the broader geopolitical instability around the world, which has forced many people to find a safer place to live. Now, there are also several other benefits which you only really appreciate having lived here for a period of time. It's well located time zone wise for handling calls with Asia, Europe, and the US East Coast. And it also has great access with direct flights to nearly all of the biggest cities in the world. And finally, I am glad to see that the crypto ecosystem is continually growing over here. Numerous crypto companies and people have moved, and it's a great place to meet like minded individuals. Are there any downsides? Well, yes. Dubai has been carved out of the desert, and that means that for at least three to four months of the year, the heat becomes pretty unbearable. In fact, those summer months are when most expats take their leave. So, if you are going to be moving to Dubai, then that's something you have to plan for. When it comes to residency and immigration, there are a number of options. For example, if you decide to set up a company here in one of the free zones, then you can sponsor yourself on a work visa. These are good for two years after which they can be renewed. Or your company can sponsor you with a five year entrepreneur visa if your business has a minimum capital of 500,000 dirham. If you are specifically looking to set up a crypto related business, then the DMCC free zone could be your best pick. They even have a dedicated crypto center for crypto related startups. That said, you don't have to set up a company if you want to live here. If you are self employed, then you can also avail yourself of the freelance visa. This was recently launched as a means to attract top talent, and it's available for people who want to work in the media or education sectors. It's a 12 month visa that must be renewed each year, but it is the best option if you're a gig worker who wants to live here. There is a third option, though, and this could be for all those people who work remotely for a company overseas but would still like to live in Dubai for a year. They have a virtual working program that allows you to live in the country for one year, assuming that you earn a certain minimum salary, $3,500 per month. Now, the final option for visas is what is termed the golden visa, which is issued for up to 10 years. You can get this should you meet an exceptional ability criteria or invest a certain amount in property. Now, if any of these immigration or business setup options interest you, then there are a number of services that can help, and I've linked to them below. Okay, so that is Dubai. On to the next one on our list, though, and this is perhaps best for those of you who have US passports Puerto Rico. Now, I will caveat first and say that Puerto Rico is not a country per se, but a territory of the United States. While this means that they can't vote in certain federal elections, they do have a special status which allows them to implement certain tax policies. One of the most relevant for crypto investors is the Individual Investors Act, or Act 22. This allows US citizens living on the island to be exempt from federal income tax. Not only that, but they may also be exempt from capital gains tax as well as dividend taxes. You'll also only pay 4% corporate tax. The reason why Puerto Rico is such a good option for US citizens is that it's the only way they can legally get that 0% income tax status without renouncing their US passports. As most Americans will know, Uncle Sam will tax you until you die, irrespective of where you live and where you earn your money. That is, unless you're in Puerto Rico. Now, while that's a pro for those who have crypto holdings, Puerto Rico is still subject to many of the same laws that come from Washington on the crypto regulation front. So, it could still be pretty difficult for you to build a crypto startup on the island, especially if the regulators get their way with Operation Choke Point 2. More about that in the description. That aside, moving to Puerto Rico as a US citizen is easy enough. And you officially get that tax residency status if you've been on the island for more than 183 days in a calendar year. That's a plus, especially if you don't want to live on the island for the entire year. Okay, but what's it like to live in Puerto Rico? 
Well, for one thing, there is a lot of natural beauty. There are amazing beaches with mountains and crystal clear waters. The weather is also warm all year round, with the coldest months only ever reaching an average temperature of 16 Celsius. There is a flip side to that good weather, though, and that is hurricane season. Puerto Rico is often in the path of hurricanes, and the effects of Hurricane Maria back in 2017 were particularly severe for the country. Which brings us on to something else that you want to consider about Puerto Rico, and that's its infrastructure. Not only does it have poor public transportation, but most of its power infrastructure is ailing. During the Hurricane Maria disaster, the island was left without electricity for weeks. I'll also add that the internet there is known for being unreliable, not exactly the ideal outcome for someone who depends on online work like crypto traders and investors. That aside, the cost of living in Puerto Rico is pretty low when compared to not only the United States, but also a number of other Caribbean countries. According to this handy chart over here, a single person can get by on less than $1,000 a month, excluding rent. Rents can range between $450 to $800, and it obviously varies based on the size or location. So, it's really quite affordable for anyone who would be considering moving from the States. One more thing to consider is that there is a fair amount of crime. While it's generally lower than in most US states, it does have a pretty high murder rate per capita at six times the US average. So, if you are considering making the move to Puerto Rico, then I would consider storing all of your crypto on a hardware wallet and stashing that in a safe. If you don't have a hardware wallet, then I have some deals for you in the description. In summary then, Puerto Rico is a decent alternative for US citizens who want a warm and relatively affordable place to live while paying no taxes. Just try to avoid it during hurricane season. Okay, on to our next country, and that is Portugal. Now, I will say that Coin Bureau has some first-hand experience with this, given that Taylor, one of our team members, actually lives in Portugal as a digital nomad. So, his experience there has helped inform this video. So, why is Portugal such a great place? Well, it's perhaps one of the best choices if you want to live in Europe in a country that's part of the EU. That's for a number of reasons, but let's start with one of the most important, and that's their laws around crypto taxes. Well, up until very recently, it used to be tax-free. That is to say that you were not charged any capital gains on your crypto positions, as well as any taxes that would have accrued from staking. This made Portugal the only country in Europe that offered tax-free crypto gains, even for those trading it on the day-to-day. -day. However, in the budget presented last year, the government proposed a new crypto tax policy that would end this zero-tax treatment. There is a silver lining to this, though, and that's that you are still not charged any capital gains on your crypto if you have held the position for over a year, i.e. a hodler and not a trader. Portugal is not unique in this, though, as other European countries like Germany have similar tax laws for crypto. But where Portugal is unique is in the cost of living. That's because it's known to be one of the most affordable countries in Western Europe to live in. Another benefit for Europeans, especially those in the West, is that it has a relatively warm climate. They have mild winters that barely ever get below 15 degrees Celsius. And one of the ways that you can enjoy that warm climate and sunny weather is, of course, on one of Portugal's numerous beaches. Portugal is also a very safe country with relatively low crime rates when compared to most other European countries. Therefore, crypto holders should feel free to rock out with their ledgers out. I'm joking, by the way. Please don't do that. If you don't speak Portuguese, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem day to day, as most people speak English to some degree. However, there is an important caveat to this, and that's when dealing with anything government-related. And speaking of the government, this is another issue that I've heard from people who have moved to Portugal from other countries. There is a lot of bureaucracy. And anything that involves dealing with the government takes ages. So, be forewarned. If you think you can handle that, then you may want to consider the move to Portugal. If you have a passport from an EU country, then that's easy, as EU citizens have free movement rights. However, if you don't hold an EU passport, then you still have options to move to Portugal. One of the easiest is through their freelance visas. 
These are ideal for digital nomads, and there are two that could be of interest. These are the D7 Passive Income Visa and the D2 Entrepreneur Visa. I won't go into the details of how to obtain these, but I have linked to a number of resources in the description if you want to look into it yourself. If you do the research online, you may also read about Portugal's Golden Visa program. This would have allowed applicants to get residency should they have invested a certain amount in the country. Unfortunately, though, this has been suspended on the basis that it was driving up property prices around the country, so bear that in mind. And finally, when it comes to crypto regulations, Portugal is beholden to the laws of the EU overlords in Brussels. While that's generally seen as a bad thing, the EU has been less hawkish of late as compared to the US when it comes to crypto. More specifically, their recent proposals in the MICA bill have been relatively level-headed, and they've even consulted the crypto sector on some of the more harmful measures in previous versions. The point is that if you're thinking of setting up a crypto business in Portugal, then you should soon have clear rules of the road that could help you determine how to operate in the country. So, in summary, Portugal is a great choice for Europeans who want a warm climate, zero taxes on crypto holdings, and a low cost of living. I would, however, brush up on some Portuguese if you plan to stay there for a longer time and apply for things like citizenship, etc. OK, on to the next country on the list, and this is our best pick for those who would love to live in Latin America. And that is Costa Rica, a country in Central America with some of the most breathtaking natural beauty in the world. Not only that, but the country is also pretty forward-thinking when it comes to crypto regulations. For one thing, last year a congresswoman there introduced a bill that seek to approve Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a regulated payment method in the country. This would make it easier for companies to buy and sell crypto as well as get access to banking. The bill would also have excluded taxes on Bitcoin that's kept in cold storage as well as any taxes on mining. While it has not yet officially passed, it's good to know that there are forward-thinking politicians in the country. And speaking of taxes, Costa Rica is a well-known country for tax expats from North America. More specifically, those who reside in the country but earn income that is not sourced from the country, i.e. outside of Costa Rica, will be exempt from paying any tax on said income. Of course, you do need to be aware that the key word here is foreign sourced, which means that you will still have to pay tax if you earn any funds within Costa Rica. That means that if you set up a company within the country, you will be subject to a corporate rate of tax, and if you pay yourself from said company, then you will be taxed as the income is not foreign sourced. Moreover, if you are trading crypto in the country, there could be a case made that the activity takes place within the country and will therefore incur local capital gains tax. So it's worth keeping all that in mind. But assuming that's not an issue for you, then Costa Rica could be an amazing choice. As I mentioned, it's a biodiversity hotbed with a range of different activities on offer, especially for those inclined to nature. For example, you can get some of the most amazing beaches on the Caribbean coast to the north, or you can explore the rainforests in the centre of the country. There are also volcanoes and mountains dotting the landscape. I mean, look at how exquisite this vista is. Beyond that, the weather is also a massive pro. It's hot with lots of sunshine and temperatures that range from 22 to 28 degrees Celsius all year round. It's also a relatively laid-back culture, and the people have been described as generally friendly. Speaking of which, you can get by by only speaking English. This is especially the case for those towns that are popular with tourists, and most Costa Ricans have at least a basic command of English. However, if you want to make the most of your time in the country, then it's well advised to learn Spanish. When it comes to cost of living, Costa Rica is quite affordable by European or American standards. The average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in the centre of San Jose is $500 and it can get even lower to around $350 when you move outside of the city centre. If you were to include all the other living costs, then a single person could get by on an income of between $1,300 and $1,700 a month, while a couple would need about $2,000. Not bad at all. In terms of safety, Costa Rica consistently ranks as one of the safest countries in Central America. Of course, the benchmark there is pretty low when you consider that Central America has some pretty violent places. And 
Although the murder rate is lower than many American cities, there is still a large degree of petty crime. So, it's not really the place you want to have a flashy lifestyle. Something else that you have to consider is that the infrastructure can sometimes be unreliable. That includes the internet infrastructure, which could be a problem, especially for those remote workers. So, you may want to load up on a backup Starlink if fast and stable internet is a must. So, if you are thinking of making the move to Costa Rica, then the best visa option for you is the digital nomad visa. This will allow remote workers, business owners, and freelancers to stay in the country for longer than on a tourist visa. The main requirements for this are that you must work for a foreign company, own a business, or be a freelancer. You must also have a monthly income of at least $4,000 and have health insurance covered. I'll leave links to resources below that should give you some guidance should you want to apply for this visa. So, in summary then, Costa Rica is a country of natural beauty that's ideal for expats that want to live tax-free in an affordable and relatively safe place. Moving on to our final country on the list, though, and that is Malaysia. Now, Malaysia is ideal for those who want to live in Asia but can't afford the high barriers to entry for Singapore or its prohibitively expensive cost of living. Firstly, when it comes to taxes, Malaysia has a territorial tax regime that is similar to that of Costa Rica. What that means is that if you earn an income that's foreign sourced, you're not taxed on it even if you do live in Malaysia. There's also an additional benefit here in that Malaysia doesn't charge any capital gains tax unless the asset is Malaysian property. So, what that means is that you can reside in the country, actively trade crypto, and your gains may not be subject to local taxation. There is corporate tax in the country, though, so if you are going to set up a company there, then you would be subject to that. Moreover, any income that you pay yourself from this company would be locally sourced income, and you would have to pay Malaysian income tax on that. So, it's something that you perhaps want to avoid doing. So, how about the cost of living? Well, as mentioned, Malaysia is really quite affordable when compared to some of the other countries in the region. For example, a single person can get by on about $500 a month, excluding rent, whereas a family of four is looking at about $1,600. In terms of housing costs, rental for a one-bedroom in the capital Kuala Lumpur is about $460, whereas for a three-bedroom home, you're looking at about $857. That means that the cost to live in Kuala Lumpur is about $1,000 for a single person and $2,500 for a family of four. Not bad at all. Something else that's quite convenient for those who only speak English is that nearly everyone in the country speaks it and all government services are in English. So it's a lot easier for you to get by here than in some of the other countries that I've covered. Looking at the climate, meanwhile, Malaysia can be a bit of a barrier for some. That's because it's a tropical country and therefore has extreme weather. For example, between June and August, you can expect a heck of a lot of rain, as that's monsoon season. You also have to contend with some pretty stifling humidity, as well as general air pollution. So it's not necessarily the tropical, pristine paradise that Costa Rica is. Then again, it is well located to visit a number of other Asian countries that do have expensive natural beauty, so that is a plus. In terms of safety, it's a mixed bag. While Malaysia generally has a low crime rate compared to countries in the West, it's still higher than comparable countries like Singapore. It's also well known that Malaysia has some pretty bad drivers with incredibly congested roads. That contributes to a relatively high fatality rate for road accidents. Something else that you want to consider, meanwhile, is that while the cost of living is generally affordable in Malaysia, it all depends on what you're consuming. If you prefer to eat Western foods and generally import Western goods, then it can be quite expensive. They have high rates of taxation on these imported items, which means that you're going to have to shell out more than you were expecting. So, bearing all of that in mind, if you're still keen to move to Malaysia, then they do have attractive visa options. Your best bet is perhaps the Malaysia Digital Nomad Visa. This costs about $250 to apply for, and it will allow you to live in the country for a period of a year with the opportunity to extend it. You're also allowed to bring dependents. Applications are open to citizens of all countries assuming that they have an income of more than $24,000 a year. 
There are also several benefits that come with this, including the Rantau Nomad Pass, which grants privileged access to co-working facilities and other services for digital nomads. I've linked to some additional resources below should you want to explore this visa option for yourself. So, in summary then, Malaysia is a great option for those who'd want to trade crypto tax-free in a country with a low cost of living and with easy access to the rest of Asia. However, get ready for some pretty crazy weather and some expensive imported goods. Okay, that's it for my list of the top five, and I hope you found it helpful. Now, I will stress again that before you consider any move to any of these countries above, you have to speak to a tax and immigration advisor. Your individual circumstances may be different, and some of these laws also may have changed since this video was released. So, DYOR people. And now I am keen to hear from you. Anyone living in any of these countries care to share your opinion? Any other countries that I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you would like to support the channel, then you should also check out my merch store. That's where you can pick up this magical number and so much more. And finally, if you think this crypto guy did a fine job, well, smash up that like button, why don't you? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button too. Oh, and don't forget the bell so YouTube can give you a bell as well. Right, that's it from me. I will see you in the next one.